instruction in the dressing room. I expect a clean, fair fight, start to finish, and protect yourself at all times. Touch up, good luck. Those eyes of Crawford lock in now. The eyes of a skilled hunter we've seen it time and again. And for years we've watched Terrence focus in and finish off opponents. He cares about this challenge and the legacy. Can Porter pull it off? Or will this be Crawford's statement night? We find out right now. We are underway for the welterweight championship and Porter comes right out. Stepped right to Terrence Crawford and threw a combination. As we thought he would. Andre Ward and Tim Bradley with me. Joe Tessitore ringside here in Vegas. Andre, there's a distinct work rate pattern to Terrence Crawford in welterweight title defenses. He's economical early. He averages 28 punches thrown in the first round of those fights. That's a low number. It's half the usual welterweight output. Do you believe that makes for a grand opportunity for Sean Porter if he's too economical? It can, but that's who Terrence Crawford is. He's not going to change tonight unless he's forced to change by Sean Porter. Terrence likes two or three rounds to get his game plan, gauge distance and range, and understand what he wants to do. It's to Sean Porter's advantage to press the issue and not allow Crawford to do that. I like what Porter's doing now. He's marching forward, but he's changing his rhythm, changing slots, moving his head, coming high, behind the double jab. And when he gets close, he's letting his hands go. No punch, no punch, no punch. I got it. Turn around, turn around. Turn around. And if Porter can steal some early rounds, it creates a sense of urgency in Crawford, which may draw him into a fight instead of a boxing match. Wait, fight out there, fight out there. Stop. Break. Step back. This is what's called controlled aggression by Sean Porter. Not reckless, controlled. Coming behind the jab, staying disciplined, keeping his balance, not lunging forward, inching closer and closer to Crawford. Crawford kept his composure this whole round. Didn't seem rattled at all. Didn't seem wide-eyed. He's fought in front of big crowds before. He knew Sean Porter would come forward. It was no surprise to Terrence Crawford. Crawford right now, he's calculating the speed, the distance for Sean Porter. He felt the power already. But that nervous energy right there, look at Porter, smart, step back. Didn't want to crowd Terrence Crawford. Mayweather's dad, Floyd Sr., always a fixture in the Vegas fight scenes. Round number two in that first round, Sean Porter landed six of 29. Crawford landed three of 15. I think that's exactly where Porter wants to be. Not the whole fight, but certainly in spots to hit the body of Terrence Crawford to try to slow him down and to cause him to get uncomfortable early in this fight where he starts to press. But you can see the patience also from Porter. He's just not rushing in there. He's thinking before he makes any move. Well, he has to with a guy that can hit and has timing and quickness like Terrence Crawford. Things can get ugly quick. Tried to catch him with that check hook from that southpaw stance did Crawford as Porter came forward that time. <laughs> Porter's fought a lot of different styles, but he's never fought a lot of different styles in one man. And that's who he's facing tonight. He's facing a southpaw, a guy who fights left-handed, 
and orthodox fighters. A guy who can box and a guy who can fight and a guy who can hit. Good shot right there from Sean Porter. Sean Porter responds with the right hand after Crawford threw the right hook. Those are the surprising combinations that Porter is great at doing. Doesn't matter what position he's in, you got to be cautious and be ready every time he comes in. Right hook by Crawford right there got Porter's attention. Sitting right on top of the orthodox fighter. Porter just able to get away from the uppercut. Good exchange on the inside. Good action here in round two. Crawford lands a right hand. Porter so willing. Porter got the best of that. Sure did. Here come Bud. Crawford trying to time that backhand for a moment. I think boxing is slowly going out of the mind of Terrence Crawford. He doesn't like getting hit flush. He doesn't like the reaction of the crowd, even though this is a pro, crowd, uh, pro Crawford crowd. He wants to get some get back. You see that in his eyes and in his demeanor right now. To the body to finish off an entertaining second round. <laughs> Bo Mack, Brian McIntyre, the trainer of Terrence Crawford, said don't get into a firefight with Sean Porter. Meanwhile, Kenny Porter, the trainer father of Sean Porter, was giving his son advice in terms of how to react when Crawford does touch him. So both trainers want guys composed, collected, and sticking to the plan. That second round was something. Porter was 12 of 34. Crawford was 11 of 36. Bomack is going to have to remind Terrence Crawford often to not get into a firefight, but to box. Not sure if Crawford's going to listen. You wonder what's slowing down Sean Porter. It's the southpaw stance of Crawford. When he was in orthodox stance, Porter was able to land his jab and get inside. Now from the southpaw stance, he has to battle the lead hand of Terrence. Porter starting to lunge a tad bit when he comes behind his jab. That's what Porter does when he gets over anxious and he starts to reach for a taller man. And that could be very dangerous against this guy, Terrence Crawford. But attempted right there, the uppercut as Porter lunged forward. Terrence is starting to find his rhythm. As soon as he starts landing his jab, he starts getting comfortable. Here comes a turn from Porter. As soon as Terrence attacks, Porter's going to try to turn Terrence into that corner. That's why he's sitting there. There it is. Good eye, Tim. Ooh. But it's coming. To the body with the right hand goes Porter. Bud saying, you want some of that? You oh, want that kind of exchange? Yeah, he likes it. It's over now. Bud is here. A fight about to break out now. There's a cut on the eye of Porter. It looked like there may have been a clash of heads on that last exchange when both men came in. Remember, Southpaw and Orthodox, you can often get that angle where the head comes into play. So there is blood now around the right eye of Sean Porter. That is not a knockdown. Doesn't look like much, but Porter had to pick himself off the canvas. That takes some of the energy. Now they're wrestling against the ropes. Southpaw versus Orthodox. The Ducks. There it is. There it is. Action Terrence coming right inside. Beautiful uppercut on in the inside by Sean Porter. Hey guys. 
Just watch your feet, all right? And then here's the moment where they tie up and Porter went falling down. And then the end of the round. Yeah, sure, they've been friends since the amateur circuit. It's a fight. It's a fight. But Porter right here, seeing how strong Terrence is, he's showing them. Former high school football star against a wrestling fanatic, a father of two wrestlers who are collecting trophies. Tyrese and Little T. Round number four. Punches through three, 25 to 20, Porter. Ooh. Beautiful surprising Coming. hook right there from Porter. Coming into this fight, Porter's been cut 11 times. The majority of those cuts have come on the right eye, so there's a lot of scar tissue there. Not surprised that his eyes opened up this early. It's very noticeable when you're with him. Looks like railroad tracks when you talk to him around that right eye, and now there's blood coming from it. This is the urgency that I was talking about that Sean Porter. Good left from hand from Crawford. Good shot right there to the body. But you see Crawford is not thinking about boxing. He's thinking about fighting. And then very accurate with the right hand as well. Puts him off balance again right to the chest. You see Porter being patient more than usually in fights because he feels those punches coming from Crawford and those sharp counters. It's good to be relentless. It's good to have aggression, but it can't be too much of a risk-reward fatal flaw. His attacks has to be explosive. Yes. They got to be sharp, accurate. After Terrence, miss or throw something like that. As he bounces and then comes forward with the right hand. What Crawford is having issues with right now is the sneak attacks from Sean Porter. They're so explosive and so fast that Crawford doesn't have time to compute what's happening and before he knows that he's been hit. Dynamic <laughs> fight early on. Fascinating fight early on. The athleticism of Sean Porter. The skill and accuracy of Terrence Crawford. Don't punch, don't punch. I don't step think back, pulling back, back is the answer for Crawford. I think he's got to have a tight guard and allow Porter to open up. And when he opens up, you get your shots off just like that. Pulling back from a shorter arm guy that's as explosive as Sean Porter is not a good idea. There's another left hand trying to dig underneath as Porter came forward. Crawford's been trying to test that body a bit. Crawford's doing the right thing by going down to the body, trying to slow down Porter. Hoping that Lunging that with the right hand, he gets out of the way, and all of a sudden Porter goes face first into the neutral corner. Ole, Tess, Ole. Here comes the turn, the pivot. Short left hand from Crawford as Porter comes out of that position. And we finish up round four. Man, oh man, is this intense early on. Cuff right there from Terrence Crawford just turning Porter. The Cubans are known for doing that. That's a Cuban move right there. Turning. Cuffing the head there. Pushing the guy in the corner. But why did he do it? Porter was lunging forward, trying to catch and trying to corner Terrence. Set zone. Set zone. Al Chernoff is the cut man for Sean Porter. He is tasked with handling that right eye that opened up due to an accidental clash in round number three. Double right hand right there from Porter sneaks in. And here Kenny, his father, saying, Sean, go left, go left. Right now he's circling right, and that is right into the range and the track of the backhand, the power hand, Terrence Crawford. Mm. Let's look at Andre Ward's card through four rounds, 39-37, Porter. 
Tess, I could have easily given Crawford one of those three first three rounds. Good shot right there from Porter. But Porter would always do just enough to kind of eke out the round. And Crawford would give up that one or two blows that would seal the round for Sean Porter in my book. I would circle the second round as potentially the round that could swing the other way. But it's understandable that you have tight rounds beyond the first. Let me just tell you this. If Crawford thinks Porter's going to slow down, he's not. He's not going to slow down. He's going to be this intense and bring this type of intensity all night long. Well, Porter's not even as intense as he normally is. He's being very thoughtful and methodical. He'll have tense moments, but he's not wrestling inside and digging to the body like we've seen him in the past. So you're right. I don't think Porter, at this pace especially, is going to fade. I just spoke with Bo Mack, who trains Terrence Crawford, and he told me, I want Terrence to box more because that will open up the shots that he needs to can land on Sean Porter. There's Porter coming in with that relentless aggression that he's known for. Terrence covering up as Porter tries to get around that guard. Terrence smiles at him and pushes him away. Doesn't matter that it doesn't hurt. Sean Porter's piling up points. That's exactly right, Dre. Porter right now is fighting the perfect fight. Being athletic, using his hand speed, using volume, roughing up Terrence on the inside right now. Watch your head, guys. Move you guys. Changing rhythms. Wait. Step back. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Now at range, trying to place that left hand right to the body. He does a few times. And then goes on the attack to close out the round, does Terrence Bud Crawford. Dre Bomack said the same thing that you expressed with your analysis of, hey, you're letting him come up and just touch you at times. It may not matter to you. You're not being affected, but it matters to the judges. That's exactly what his trainer told him. Not and only now, the judges, but... But it's allowing Porter to get into a rhythm, to gain confidence. And it's forcing Bud to press because he knows he's behind, at least on my scorecard. Look at this from Bud Crawford. The official scorecard. Early on in round six, as you see the head movement from Porter, but not able to dodge all of it. Here comes Porter, Porter now comes in. Back and forth they go. I don't know if I saw some blood coming from the right ear or left ear of Terrence Crawford. I don't know if it's Porter's blood or not, but that's not a good sign. Go forearm to the neck and a pat on the back from Sean Porter. Oh, good body shot right there, sneak. He has been able to get that left hand to the body a few times here in the first half of this fight. He's landed 11 body shots, has Bud Crawford. But if you're Terrence Crawford, this is what you wanted. You've been arguably the best fighter in the world, give or take, <clears throat> one through three over the last few years. But individuals, critics, fans, they, they got questions. And Sean Porter's asking those questions of Terrence Crawford tonight. It's a great opportunity for him to answer. Porter just crossed that threshold, and Crawford was quick to throw the left hand. Trying to cut off with some of these, the ring there. Yeah, to and your point, again. Tess, some of these rounds are close, but the, even the body language of Sean Porter can suggest that he's in control. And now this clash ahead here in the six opens up a cut on the right eye inside, right on the brow of Terrence Crawford. So each man has been cut from an accidental clash. Mm. Touch, touch, then power from Crawford. Wide swinging right hand from Porter off the mark. Attempt at the uppercuts from Crawford. 
infighting from Porter. High intensity stuff here in Vegas. Sean doing the right thing. He got one hand free. He's swinging with the opposite hand. But is landing, but Porter's taking the play almost every time. Back of the trunks, Reed War. On a night, he honors marvelous Marvin Hagler. And at the halfway point, it has indeed been a war. 53 punches landed for Crawford, 54 by Porter. Here's the clash of heads. Crawford right there comes in. Porter actually wraps his arm around. Crawford brings him in and causes a headbutt. Yeah, that was an accidental headbutt. Crawford getting the worst end of that. I heard Kenny Porter saying, pick your spots. Pick your spots, but then back on defense. They really stressed fundamentals in this training camp to go up against Crawford. Of getting your hands back, of being in proper position defensively. Round seven. It's the patience, the athleticism, and sharpness of Porter that's giving problems to Bud. In that last round, Crawford had a 16 to 10 connect advantage. Landed 13 power punches. Always willing, right? Hands free, gonna fight. Heard the warning from Celestino Ruiz about leading with the head. Right now, Sean Porter has fought the perfect fight. A good mix of fighting, probably less than we thought he was going to do, but good boxing, answering at the right time. His defense has been good. We know that one punch can change it for either guy, but so far, so good for Sean Porter. And a critical word there, the descriptive of mixing it up. There's a right hand from Porter. He hurt. He closed the gap and landed a right hand, but that is what Porter said the other day. He said he'll never see anybody as athletic as Sharp, but somebody who mixes it up. You have to mix it up against Terrence Crawford. And this is war for Sean Porter. It's the art of war, sneak yep. attacks. It's fighting, it's boxing, it's going away when you want me to come forward. It's a little bit of everything that we're seeing right now from Sean Porter. Crawford has more glaring answers or more glaring questions to answer now than he did before the fight started. Don't punch, don't punch, step back. Box. See, the difference is, is that when Crawford, when he lands these shots on anybody else, they fall. But the difference is, Sean Porter is, hasn't failed. He's not going anywhere. And for what it's worth, fellas, it looked like Crawford, based on their face, their body language, their energy, or lack of energy, looked like he struggled more with the weight than Sean Porter. If so, you're going to see that show up in the latter half of this fight. Coming to the end of round number seven. Porter landed that right hand in the seventh round. Ooh. And as we come to the bell, an opportunity to check in with Mark Kriegel and Max Kellerman. <laughs> Total punches. Early even Crawford with a slight edge now, 64 to 60. Good combination, he catches him coming in. Two punch combination by Crawford. And so good countering both off the back foot, off the front foot. And now sharp shooting to the head is Crawford. Good start to round number eight for the champ. Crawford landing some of those, but not all of those. Good defense from Sean Porter, but good punches and good, good exchange from Terrence Crawford. 67-66 says Dre. Max Kellerman said he would have flipped the second round 
to Crawford, but it's that kind of fight. Good people don't understand what a swing round is, meaning it literally could go either way. And it happens often at this level, Trey, right? At this elite, elite level. Those little shots right there from Sean Porter are bothersome. And if they hit you right, they can hurt. Yeah, but again. One punch, none go. Nah. Right. Box. Here, Terrence actually talking to Sean about the headbutt right there. It's that pop jab right off the hip from Porter. Ooh. Just missing with the left hand as Porter came in. Terrence has to watch that body language because inside he'll turn, he'll do certain things that looks like Sean Porter is in control and he's bullying. Oh, lead right hand from Porter. And another one. Shot. There he is, right hands. Porter's doing exactly what. His father turned, ooh, that body shot right there. Wow. Oh, what a good thought from Crawford. Yeah, that was a body shot, but that was an overhand right from Sean Porter that definitely got oh Terrence Crawford's goodness. attention. Each man having success. Porter with a couple of right hands. Crawford comes back with a left to the body as he has done a few oh. times. Goes with it again. I'd rather get hit with a head shot than a body shot like that. Especially those that sound like that, that have that shotgun effect. That was a great eight, wasn't it? Was saying box them, box them, box them. And now the call to order changes of raise your level of intensity. Here we go, round nine. That's been missing from Crawford, the jab. He hasn't been on his jab. He's only landed 21% to this point. Porter's looking for the overhand right. He's looking to slip in behind the jab. He found it in the last round. There's a double jab from Crawford. What Kenny Porter is asking his, Sean, his son Sean Porter for is separation. Check hook again from the southpaw. The fight is close, it's tight. Where's the separation? Raise your game. That's what he's asking for. Olay. Crawford able to roll out to the left. Body shot from Porter. Crawford comes back jabbing. Nice little sneaky body shot from Crawford in the inside right there on the right side of Porter. He's landed 23 body punches to this point with a minute to go in round nine. Looks like Porter wants to take a round off and Crawford needs to take advantage. Left hand to the body again and again. Lead left hand from Crawford. As Porter keeps taking those steps forward. Ooh. Okay, guys, break. Give me a clean break. See Porter holding on, trying to get himself together. When you get hit with a shot like that, you got to reassess some things. Both guys landing 
some counters right there, exchanging. Going underneath with the left hand to the body. Porter, resulting back to his old ways, lunging forward, coming behind the jab, lunging forward, put his head down, boom. Crawford meets him with a nice short uppercut on the inside. He's not jumping in as much as, he's not, he's not jumping in like a, come on, bro, pay attention to it. Crawford had a 14 to 10 connect advantage in that last round. Had nine power punches overall. 92 to 79 connect advantage for Terrence Crawford. Body work in that last round and the short uppercut that we showed. Now the body punches. 28, and there is the knockdown scored in round 10 by the champ. Terrence Crawford catches Porter early in round 10. And now patiently probing. Seeing what could be behind that jab. There's a combination. There's a lead left hand. Porter looks good on his feet, but not coming forward and firing at Crawford for the moment. There's the overhand right. And another combination. Beautiful work by Crawford. Magnificent accuracy by the champ. trainer slash father embracing the undefeated world champion and the rival trainer years ago Kenny Porter had a heated exchange with Bud Crawford they almost threw at each other but it's nothing but respect now as grown men as champions Barry Hunter, who works the corner of Sean Porter, embracing Terrence Crawford. When he flips the switch, there are a few like him. Congratulations, champ. As he's making the rounds ringside, and now embracing Shakur Stevenson, who he mentors, already a two-division undefeated champion, a U.S. Olympian. And what a great spirited effort by Showtime, Sean Porter. It's all about timing. Told you Sean Porter makes too many mistakes lunging forward like that. Oh. Boom, hit with an uppercut. Terrence stepped right to the side. Created an angle for himself. Avoided those punches. 
Step back. Double step back. There you go. And then the end of the fight. So the left uppercut is the first knockdown. And watch this combination, Dre. Well, you see Crawford doing what he does best, finish. Oh. He got that right hook in there. Not a shot he really landed thus far up until this point. It's a heavy, heavy shot for any fighter to take, especially this late in the fight. Here we see a half step back. Boom, that's his signature shot that Terrence lands. He missed that, but he came back with the right hook, and it landed flush. Down goes Sean Porter, and I think Kenny Porter stopped the fight, not necessarily because of what happened, but what was to come. Terrence Crawford is the best finisher in the game, and he knew that it wasn't going to get any better for Sean Porter, especially if Sean wasn't himself and was dazed in the head and, and tried to keep off a guy like Terrence Crawford. Kenny was already up on the apron by the time his son turned around. And Dre, I think you are exactly correct. As look at the celebration with Miss Deborah and his family. He has his mom, Deborah. He has the mother of his children, Isha, Shantae, and Leticia, his sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 21 seconds in round number 10. A referee in charge, Celestino Ruiz, stops the contest upon request of the corner. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the undefeated WBO welterweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Crawford.